Hello, uh, welcome to my little corner of YouTube, uh, which is my new sewing and vintage channel. My name's Linda, and if you found me via Instagram, you'll also know me as Daisy Creates Glam. Uh, I've been sewing for about 40 years, uh, which probably seems like an incredibly long time to some of that ran. Um, I progressed on to sewing with patterns. Uh, and then onto pattern magazines because they had a lot of patterns in and were good value for money. So these were Berda and Patrones, which is a Spanish pattern magazine. I don't even know if it's still going. Um, then about 10 years ago, I discovered vintage. And along with that, I discovered vintage sewing uh, and vintage patterns. So that's what I've been doing ever since. And along the way, I've taught myself to draft patterns which is incredibly useful in uh, the vintage sewing um, medium because it means that you can draft patterns that you can't find patterns for. So, for example, I might see a dress or a suit or just something on Instagram and it's either you know, not for sale, not in my size or just a good source of inspiration. So I can save that and uh, draft the pattern and hey presto, there you go, you've got an outfit, which is incredibly useful and very satisfying. So the reason I've started the channel is to try and add a little bit of structure to my sewing um, because before it's just a little bit higgledy piggledy. I'd go and buy some fabric, go and buy some haberdashery, make something and it wasn't really, um, although the, the pieces were nice, it, it wasn't really a structured way of sewing. So I'm thinking of going towards a more structured way of sewing now and documenting things um, and maybe along the way just um, inspiring other people, informing other people, um, maybe a little bit of knowledge that I have you might find useful. So what I'm planning to do is use uh, monthly themes for my sewing. So I started this back in February which <laughs> it's only March now so that's not a long time ago. Uh, so that was my first month of sewing themes. Um, theme for that month was red, funnily enough, um, inspired by Valentine's, um, which is, that's fine, you know, you can have any inspiration you want when you've sewn, but red and uh, Valentine's just seem to go together quite well. So the first thing I made was um, a dress uh, made from this lovely roses fabric, um, which I got from one of my local fabric shops, and I just got the last four units of it which was just enough to make. So it's a dress where I've used um, a pattern for the bodice uh, and a self draft for the skirt and um, I'll give you a better view of that in a moment but I just wanted to show you the pattern that I used which is this um, pattern by Chica Freak uh, which is available on Etsy. It's not a lot of money I think something like well, it's less than four English pounds. Uh, and it comes in a variety of sizes, so you just pick the size that you want. Printing's a bit of a faff. Um, I ended up printing it in about eight pages per sheet, uh, where it would have been one sheet. So you have to be careful and read the printing instructions very carefully if you do buy this pattern. It is a lovely little pattern. Um, you can use it for a bodice, you can use it for a dress. Um, it's just a fun little pattern. Um, um, I progressed on to sewing with patterns uh, and then on to pattern magazines because they had a lot of patterns in and were good value for money. So these were Berda and Patrones, which is a Spanish pattern magazine. I don't even know if it's still going. Um, then about 10 years ago, I discovered vintage. And along with that, I discovered vintage sewing uh, and vintage patterns. So that's what I've been doing ever since. And along the way, I've taught myself to draft patterns, which is incredibly useful in uh, the vintage sewing um, medium because it means that you can draft patterns that you can't find patterns for. So, for example, I might see a dress or a suit or just something on Instagram and it's either you know, not for sale, not in my size or just a good source of inspiration. So I can save that and... Uh, draft the pattern and hey presto, there you go, you've got an outfit, which is incredibly useful and very satisfying. 
So the reason I've started the channel is to try and add a little bit of structure to my sewing um, because before it's just a little bit higgledy-piggledy. I'd go and buy some fabric, go and buy some haberdashery, make something and it wasn't really, um, although the, the pieces were nice, it, it wasn't really a structured way of sewing so I'm thinking of going towards a more structured way of sewing now and documenting things um, and maybe along the way just um, inspiring other people, informing other people, um, maybe a little bit of knowledge that I have you might find useful. So what I'm planning to do is use uh, monthly themes for my sewing. So I started this back in February, which <laughs> it's only March now, so that's not a long time ago. Uh, so that was my first month of sewing themes. Um, theme for that month was red funnily enough, um, inspired by Valentine's, um, which is, that's fine, you know, you can have any inspiration you want when you've sewn, but red and uh, Valentine's just seem to go together quite well. So the first thing I made was um, a dress uh, made from this lovely roses fabric, um, which I got from one of my local fabric shops, and I just got the last four units of it, which was just enough to make. So my second mate for February was um, a 1940s wristlet bag uh, and that was from a pattern um, again I got on Etsy uh, it's a McCall's uh, pattern from the 1940s if you buy this you get four different bag styles uh, this was the one that I was interested in um, I'd actually been wanting to make a wristlet bag for quite a long time so I um, was quite pleased to find this pattern uh, I think you can buy it from, from a number of sellers on Etsy. Uh, this was a, a PDF pattern, uh, which I quite like because I'm quite impatient once I buy a pattern. I want to get it straight away, uh, which I don't know why that is, because when I order fabric, I have to wait for it to drop through the letterbox. But anyway, that's um, easy assemble, easy print out um, pattern. I'll try and uh, find out where I bought it from and pop the... Um, details down below so that if you do want to buy that pattern uh, you can uh, and it, you can see what the price is on it anyway so here so uh, here is the bag so again nice red velvet uh, in keeping with the Valentine's theme and I added in um, some little loops just here uh, so that it would give a little bit of movement in the handle uh, so that when you're wearing it it's not too rigid and it just moves around like that. Um, there was quite a bit of hand sewing in it. Uh, I hand sewed the lining in, um, I hand sewed the catch in, I used magnetic clips uh, as a closure. Um, what else did I hand sew? Oh I put a little pocket inside, uh, you can just about see that there if I hold it right uh, just to put your odds and ends in there. The only modification I made on this pattern was to add in some little pleats because the original pattern was just straight up and I just I wanted it a bit more um, angled along the sides uh, so I just thought it gave it a bit better look uh, and the one other thing I did I just added in uh, a little tassel just a little bit of a a fun detail on the front and that's just made from uh, seed beads there on the front so uh, there you go a um, lovely little 1940s bag pattern to go with uh, vintage so my final make for February was uh, a peignoir um, I've always wanted one um, and just thought they would be too difficult to sew but as it happens uh, it wasn't too difficult to sew I got the inspiration uh, just looking through Instagram one day and came across uh, an old black and white photo of uh, the 1940s actress Dorothy L'Amour uh, and it's a photograph of her in a film called Call to the Draft and she's wearing this fabulous peignoir and I thought yep need to recreate that so what better thing could you have for a red Valentine's theme than a peignoir so here it is I can't I can't show you the pattern because um, I just used um, a, a, an odd 1940s blouse pattern 
uh, as the top half and then just extended it and added in my own uh, sleeves which had a lot of gathers in. So uh, here's the pen. So that's the peignoir. Um, a, I'll just give you a, a close up here on the shoulder edge. Um, I just stitched some seed beads uh, around this yoke here just to give it a bit more authenticity uh, with the inspiration. I think the one on the one that Dorothy Lamour is wearing uh, is actually embroidery, but um, I think the seed beads work quite well on this. It's actually made from, um, it's a charmeuse, but it's not a silk charmeuse. Um, I thought it was going to be a bit of a devil to work with, but actually it wasn't too bad. Um, the sleeves are gathered at the top. Um, and then also a lot of gather in the bottom there. And it's just um, a straight down. I just added a bias edging on the inside there that probably just needs a little bit of extra stitching there but yeah overall quite pleased with my February makes um, I'm not sure where I'm going to wear this uh, I have to get my husband to take me away to some fancy 1930s hotel I think and um, saying that I could always wear it to Tesco's uh, what do you think <laughs> so um, I hope you've enjoyed my first little YouTube I've probably got a lot to learn when it comes to um, speaking and getting my act together and putting videos together um, for this. But um, I've quite enjoyed it. So I think there might be another one coming up in March for my March sewing theme. But you'll have to keep posted for that. Uh, and if you've lasted this long uh, and listened to all of it, well, thank you very much. And uh, Maybe, just maybe you might subscribe so that you don't miss any future postings that I put up. 